Today we're going to be discussing God and the Good, and that's by Kai Nielsen, and a contemporary philosopher. And this uh, subject is really the subject of the divine command theory, or let's put it this way. The expression divine command theory is kind of an umbrella expression, and it's describing a number of interrelated theories united by the belief that God determines what is right and wrong by God's commands and prohibitions. Now, lots of questions we could ask about such a theory. Certainly it's one of the most popular theories historically, and it's certainly true that many people learn about right and wrong through religion. In fact, for many people, that is the primary, if not the only, source of how they learn about right or wrong. But the question arises whether, philosophically speaking, someone needs to believe in a particular religion and in a particular God to uh, determine what is right and what is wrong. Now, uh, it's going to, what's going to happen is Nielsen's going to argue that we don't require a belief in God or any particular religion to determine right or wrong. He doesn't go into great detail in this essay about that, uh, but he would say that we can have good reasons for thinking something's morally good without necessarily being religious. I mean, it, for example, if some practice, social practice, helps us get along with one another, helps us prevent or reduce social conflict, helps us produce, pr excuse me, helps us reduce or um, prevent uh, suffering, then he would say that well, that gives us a reason for uh, approving of that uh, social practice. So he thinks that we can draw all sorts of moral distinctions. We can believe that uh, honesty is morally good without necessarily being religious or believing in a particular God. Okay, so that certainly that's what he believes. He doesn't deny that many people learn about morality through religion. He doesn't deny that. And, and furthermore, he, will, he accepts the idea that if someone believes in the God of ethical monotheism, such as the God of uh, Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, then that person is going to believe in moral goodness. Now, why is that? Well, his belief is that if if you believe in the God of ethical monotheism, and I gave you examples of three religions that would qualify as ethical monotheism, then uh, the uh, goodness is supposed to be part of God's nature. So it's like saying if you believe in puppies, then you're going to end up believing in young animals because that's part of the definition of a, of a puppy. If you believe in triangles, then you're also going to believe in three-sided figures because that's part of uh, being a triangle, uh, an essential part. So what his, his idea is this, that yes, if someone believes in the Judeo-Christian God or the Muslim God, then the person's going to believe in moral goodness because that is an essential part of uh, the concept of that God. <clears throat> but he says it doesn't follow that if someone believes that something's morally good, such as honesty, that the person is required philosophically to believe in any God. Okay, that's that's really his his main thesis. Okay, now before he gets there, before he gets there, he spends a lot of time asking whether the statement that God is good, God with a capital G, uh, the the God of ethical monotheism, whether when you say God is good, is he goes is that statement analytic or synthetic? Well, let's, these are technical terms, of course. If a statement or proposition is analytic, that means that it'll be true or false because of meaning or, log or logic. For example, if you say that um, triangles are three-sided, since being three-sided is part of the definition of, definition of a triangle, that's going to be analytically true. If someone said triangles are four-sided, that would be analytically false. Okay, 
Now, uh, why? Because in virtue of the definition, we can determine these things. We don't have to go outside and check or enlist the aid of a scientist, right? Um, okay, same thing. Uh, a bachelor, if you say bachelors are unmarried, that's analytically true. If you say bachelors are married, that's analytically false. Okay, now also, it's suppose you uh, say that um, so-and-so is either president of the United States or the person isn't. Uh, let's say Donald Trump. And of course, it depends on when you say this, right? Um, but suppose whether it's going to either be the case that Donald Trump is president at a given time of the United States or he isn't, and, and that is analytically true, right? It's true. Um, that's true as a matter of logic. If someone says, uh, you go, what do you do for a living? And you go, well, uh, I'm either a, uh, a firefighter or I'm not a firefighter. Well, that's going to be analytically true regardless of what the person does, right? Um, so uh, it's just like the weather. If you said it's either going to rain uh, within the next five minutes uh, outside my front door or it's not. Now, technically, that's not a weather report, but it's analytically true as a matter of logic. But anyway, the, the point is that an analytic proposition or judgment or statement is one that is going to be true or false in virtue of its meaning or logic. Now, there's, there, the non-analytic or synthetic statement would be true or false, but not in virtue of meaning or logic. So if someone says that, um, I don't know, that they, they have a um, yellow car, that would be non, a non-analytic uh, proposition. That's not true because of meaning or logic. If someone says it's uh, I don't know, it's uh, 62 degrees Fahrenheit outside his or her, her front door uh, at a particular time, uh, that would be a non-analytic or synthetic proposition. So then, okay, so let's get back to the statement that God is good. Okay. So if you're talking about the God of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, for example, and that's the God he's speaking about because he's talking about the divine command theory in particular relation to that God. He's not talking about Zeus, uh, because the Greeks, of course, did not think that it was an essential part of Zeus's nature that he was good. In fact, they would be the first to admit, uh, at least the ones who believed in Zeus at a particular time, that uh, Zeus had a lot of human uh, foibles or foible, uh, weaknesses that we would recognize in human beings as weaknesses. But anyway, the point is that, okay, so you take the statement that God is good, the God with capital G, the God of ethical monotheism. Then he asks, is this analytic or synthetic? And then he comes up with the conclusion that it's analytic. And why does he say that? Because he says it's a par it embodies a partial definition. In other words, it, when people learn about the God of Judaism, Christian, or Islam, that that God is supposed to be, um, as a matter of definition, good. It's not supposed to be an open question whether God is, that God is good. Okay, so it's kind of like puppies are young. That's a partial definition of a puppy. So he says, to the extent that someone believes in that God, the person must believe in moral goodness. But, but, uh, and this again is the point that I was trying to make earlier about his position. He's saying that someone can believe in moral goodness, believe, for example, that, um, that honesty is morally good without necessarily believing in any particular so what he wants to argue is that, yes, many people learn about religion, uh, morality through religion. Yes, if you believe in a particular kind of God, like the God of ethical monotheism, you're committed to a belief in moral goodness. But a belief in moral goodness, a belief that, say, honesty is morally good, doesn't commit one to a belief in God. And so to that extent, what he's saying is, that morality doesn't philosophically depend on religion or any religious belief. Okay. That's really the essence of his position. Again, the essence of his position is that if someone believes in the God of Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, the person's committed to the belief that uh, there's more goodness because that's supposed to be an essential feature of that God. Yet, it is entirely possible, he believes, to believe in moral goodness and believe, for example, that honesty is morally good without necessarily believing in any particular religion or believing in any god. And that's more or less the essence of his essay. Okay. 
and um, that God in the Good by Nielsen. Um, that's pretty much the essence of it. And um, again, there also will be uh, notes on this, lecture notes. Uh, but if you understand what I'm saying here, then you'll pretty much understand the, the essence of what he is trying to show.